Uh, you know, a lot of people are not the smartest in the world or whatever, but there's a lot to be said for really rolling up your sleeves and, and thinking hard and working hard. You know, I, I really believe in the excitement of more fundamental, you know, sort of research into the unknown. Many people are considering, well, should I go off into industry or should I go into academia? The Nobel Prize. You've certainly heard of it. And if you're an aspiring science student, you've certainly dreamed of winning one someday as well. Well, today we'll be speaking to the recipient of the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology 2020, a scientist globally respected for his groundbreaking work in the discovery of the Hepatitis C virus, Dr. Charles Rice. Let's hear what he has to say about careers in STEM and his advice so you could someday reach the same level of success as well. Be sure to like and subscribe and drop a comment letting us know who to interview next. Let's get into it. To start with, if you were talking to a bunch of teenagers making academic choices in high school, what would you say to them to try and convince them to pursue science? Well, I, I don't think... Um... I wouldn't really try and sort of sell this career to, you know, or force people into something that they didn't have um, a real interest and curiosity about. You have to you have to be willing to to go for it, um, so that you're not really working to make money. You're working because you have a passion to do what you are doing. And um, so I think a lot of it, you know, if you're talking about, you know, I certainly as a, as a as a high school student or a teenager, didn't know what the hell I wanted to do, and I don't. I don't think you, you know, you really have to worry if you haven't necessarily found your, you know, your your passion um, at that at that age. Uh, you've got you've got plenty of time to sort of explore things, but I, I do think that um, you know science is is one of those endeavors that is kind of without without end. Um, we are so ignorant about the world and, and, and biology and, and evolution that it's, you know, I, I think everybody sort of thinks, well, you know, we know everything, but we know almost nothing. I feel like it's a very common dilemma, the one you mentioned about not knowing what to do when you're just in 11th or 12th grade. But the problem a lot of us face today is it might be okay to not know what to do, but it's not okay to not do anything because of how competitive everything's getting these days. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. You know, times have, you know, sort of changed since, uh, you know, the uh, 1970 when I, uh, you know, sort of first left high school and, and, and went to college. And I've always found that, you know, even if you get diverted to another path, um, that other path can be, you know, very interesting, and it may be, it may be the the path that you end up, you know, sort of taking for your entire career. And, I mean, my, I would say that mine was really just a, a combination of semi-random encounters <laughs> uh, that uh, sort of, when you sum them up, you know, sort of explain the trajectory that that I that I uh, gravitated towards and uh, sort of where I am today. What was your path like? What was the whole experience of transitioning from someone most people don't know about to someone everybody's heard? Well, I don't know. I, I just, I guess I was kind of lucky in the sense that um, I kind of got to just sort of do what I wanted to do. I sort of feel somewhat embarrassed because I can think of, you know, hundreds of other scientists that I know that I would rate higher than anything that I did. In the case of, you know, sort of hepatitis C, this, this was basically a, a full-time endeavor for, you know, countless people that, you know, contributed to this success story. And um, so it's, it's, I, I really feel as though it's it's sort of one for the team, if you will. I've always, um, 
avoided situations that might lead to making a lot of money. <laughs> um, because I think there, you know, I, I really believe in the um, excitement of more fundamental, um, you know, sort of research into the unknown. Many people are considering, well, should I go off into industry or should I go into academia? It's an individual decision. I mean, I think it, it really depends a lot on, it shouldn't be motivated by how much money you can make. It should be motivated by uh, other things, uh, either like, you know, sort of discovering something new or, or doing something that, you know, might have uh, an impact for humanity or the world. You can have a reasonable livelihood uh, in academia, but, um, you know, it does take commitment and hard work. And um, that's certainly true in, you know, sort of commercial walks of life as well, if you really want to be, you know, highly successful. Anyway, could you talk a bit what exactly is it that you do? What is your field? What is your specialization? Well, I uh, underwent sort of a radical change in between you know, sort of being a, an undergraduate at uh, UC Davis and arriving at, at Caltech for my PhD. So I really got hooked on viruses, you know, sort of early on, at least in my um, academic training and have really, you know, sort of not looked back since then. So we um, were very interested in how you know, viruses interact with cells to propagate themselves. Um, you know, how those functions have evolved. I think the other thing that I found intriguing about hepatitis C was that it, it was a real challenge because we couldn't really, you know, sort of work with this virus in the laboratory. And it took many years to develop systems and tools in order for that to be possible. And, um, I think, like many people, I felt that it was important to overcome those obstacles. And I think that it, at some point you just get a little bit pig-headed about, you know, saying, damn it, you know, the, I'm, I'm going to, you know, try and figure this out <laughs> and um, really come up with something that will be sort of useful for the field. But if nature has really come up with these amazing, you know, antiviral mechanisms, maybe if we understand them, we could actually mimic them uh, in terms of coming up with more effective preventative measures or treatments for viral infection. No, I, I think it's really exciting. So it, it gives you an idea of, you know, what your generation is going to be able to do in terms of speed and efficiency. Um, and, you know, today I think, you know, you know I think one of the, one of the challenges is going to be to come up with you know computational ways and bioinformatic approaches to take all that information and figure out you know sort of where are the nuggets you know sort of where, where do I go from this confusing array of so many things interacting with each other and influencing each other to maybe understanding you know what to do next so it's uh, there's going to be, you know, sort of, I think, a lot of bioinformatics, right, that is is going to be an important component of, of biological research. And the people that, I think, have a real appreciation of, of biology and also the ability to sort of ask interesting questions and then figure out, you know, if there isn't a software version where you can just push a button. I can see that even though I don't understand how this is done myself. Um, I can see that as being, you know, a very addictive, um, you know, sort of way of um, probing the unknown. Students, they often read about eminent personalities like yourself doing all sorts of wondrous experiments and research in such niche areas. And they wonder if they'd ever be able to reach the same level of success as you have. Thoughts like, what if I'm not smart enough, or where I live, no one does science, or it's just too difficult. That really demotivates demotiv a lot of students. What would you say to them? Or in other words, what can I do to get to where you are? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess if you look at my 
trajectory, I, I did, you know, sort of decide that I was going to go to college as undecided as I was. I, I sort of thought, if you want to be discouraged, you can always get discouraged, right? You can always think of why, you know, I'm not smart enough or this isn't going to work. So why should I do anything? I'm, I'm a big proponent of just going for it. Um, you know, if it's something that you, you know, sort of are really interested in and you can still change your mind later on if it doesn't, if it doesn't work out. And, um, you know, in my own case, you know, I, I sort of went to graduate school, I got my PhD, um, but I was so having so much fun doing sort of work in that lab and I had a lot of freedom. Um, I got a couple of offers. Um, and then I decided to go to Washington University in St. Louis, which is in the Midwest. I'd never really been to the Midwest. Uh, and people that were had more of a coastal bias told me that, you know, this is the end of your career. But I, I went there because there were some colleagues that I respected and uh, I thought we would have a good critical mass. And I knew that I could, you know, sort of just continue doing experiments without really having too much interruption. You're probably familiar with, you know, dengue and uh, Zika and, and, and West Nile. Anyway, we started working on in earnest on that, and it turned out that there were some real similarities between the flaviviruses like yellow fever and uh, and the hepatitis C virus. So again, we started working on this against, you know, sort of probably good sense. Um, you know, I was a relatively, you know, sort of young assistant professor at Wash U and here I was, you know, changing some of my research program to this to this virus that was an important human pathogen, but I couldn't grow it in the laboratory. And um, so what could you really do? You can always sort of make up reasons why you shouldn't do something, but if you're really curious, you know, you should just do it. I, I, I guess maybe I have a high tolerance for failure, um, but um, you know, usually if something doesn't work, I, I often learn something from, from that. And um, it also tends to make me just more resolute that I'm going to solve the problem. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of people are not the smartest in the world or whatever, but there's a lot to be said for, you know, just really rolling up your sleeves and, and thinking hard and working hard. Um, and I, I found those to be, you know, Pretty, pretty good ingredients. You can be the smartest person in the world, but you know, if you just sit on your butt all day, um, you know, it's not going to have much impact. <laughs> so if you're interested in trying something, why not just try it <laughs> um, and sort of see see how it goes. You guys are young. I mean, you've got a lot of you got a lot of experimentation yet to do. <laughs> so um, you know, you, you don't have to always you know sort of get the result that you're hoping for or whatever. Um, sometimes these experiments of life take you in completely new directions that turn out to be very, very important in your life.